Good morning, Metal Edge Unit. Welcome to a new episode of the Metal Meltdown. And today, we're looking at the latest album from Spirit Adrift, entitled Divided by Darkness. Spirit Adrift have been evolving pretty fast in the world of heavy metal. I mean, within these last four years, they've gone from being a one-man doom metal project led by Gatecreeper's Nate Garrett to being a full-blown, old-school heavy metal band with doom metal flourishes and ideas. Starting on 2016's Chain to Oblivion and continuing on the career-making Curse of Conception. This was a big album when it came out. Admittedly, I was a little bit late to that party, but... When I did finally get my hands on it, when I did finally sink my teeth into that album, all I could sit there and think was, holy shit, I wish I was there when this first came out. I, I wish I was not late to this party. And that brings us, of course, to this album, Divided by Darkness, nearly two years after Curse of Conception. And once again, Spirit Adrift are keen on making a lot of changes as quickly as possible. The band is progressing even further into the realms of old school heavy metal, with notable influence from some of the biggest names in heavy metal. I notice across this entire record, a uh, big time influence from Metallica, Ozzy Osbourne, I would even argue uh, Judas Priest, Painkiller era. And this isn't me throwing out big name metal bands to get your attention. This is something other people have noticed as well. Angry Metal Guy noticed this in their review, even going as far as to almost accuse the band of plagiarism in some parts. We. I don't know if I fully agree with that, but we'll address that later. As well as Ty Tilly, an Instagram user that I would consider to be a true extreme metal connoisseur. Look this guy up. I promise you there is no one who knows more about the, the deep, dark dwellings of underground metal more than this guy. And even he messaged me about a week ago and told me very straight up that this album was essentially an amalgamation of, of Metallica and Ozzy Osbourne from the late 80s. I don't foresee this being a problem for a lot of people. I mean, let's be honest, if you're gonna copy, you may as well copy a literal metal god. Their music and legacy speaks for themselves, really. But that being said, if by some wild chance you are expecting a full-blown doom metal record, I would maybe leave that at the door because the doom metal flourishes are much more restrained this time around and they're only noted a couple of times. I mean, you definitely hear some epic doom influence across the record in the guitar riffs and the guitar harmonies, especially on a uh, track Born Into Fire, which sports an absolutely massive, thunderous, true metal riff. But as far as Spirit Adrift's particular brand of doom, that I really only hear on uh, the latter portion of Living Light and Divided by Darkness. I'd like to point out, since we're on that topic, that Divided by Darkness is also one of the weaker tracks on the record. It's by no means a bad song. I mean, it, it's got some really good riffing and some great harmonies, some great vocal work. I just don't think it's nearly as strong as the rest of the record. Same with Torture by Time. I thought Torture by Time was a, a weak number since we're on that topic. The rest of the tracks on here is where this album really shines. Like I said, this is where Spirit of Drift fully embraced the spirit of old school 80s metal. It's noted immediately on We Will Not Die, which harkens back to Hell Patrol from Judas Priest's Painkiller. With epic multi-layered guitar harmonies, a huge chanting chorus, all you're really missing on this is Rob Halford's absolutely massive falsetto screeches. Not that you need it, mind you, Nate Garrett sounds incredibly confident and determined on this track, and for that matter, the rest of the album. The track Hear Her also includes the more epic spices of uh, Judas Priest's career, but also notably takes a lot of influence from, I would say, some of the darker material of Ozzy Osbourne's solo career, particularly music from Diary of a Madman and Bark at the Moon. Now, as I mentioned before, Angry Metal Guy noted in their review that there are some moments where the band does come extremely close to plagiarizing Ozzy and Metallica. I would say it's pretty clear on Hear Her, but perhaps the most obvious on Angels and the Abyss, which, as it starts off, almost feels like a direct copy of Fade to Black. It's very somber, it hits a lot of the same tones, and has the same general aesthetic. The sound mix is even very similar to Fade to Black. The way the song progresses, the way the acoustic guitars elevate into a massive walls of metallic slaughter, like, it, it's vintage Fade to Black. It's straight up Metallica, before eventually evolving into Bark at the Moon era Ozzy Osbourne shit. Don't get me wrong, great track, but this is one song where I'm like, you guys maybe have your influences a little bit too much on your sleeves. Again, I do not agree with Angry Metal Guy's implication that this is arguably plagiarism, but that being said, it is wildly similar and I, it will definitely, definitely be noticed. I know it maybe sounds like I'm being a bit harsh with this album for taking from all these bands, but here's something you need to remember. All the bands they're taking from 
are really great fucking bands with great fucking albums. There's a reason why we talk about Ozzy and Judas Priest and Metallica with such glowing enthusiasm. They are metal gods. And I also don't think it's fully intentional. I mean, no doubt these guys are inspired by these artists. What metal band isn't? But as far as Spirit Adrift is concerned, I think they were just trying to channel the glory days of late 80s and early 90s metal, and they just managed to hit a lot of the same notes that those band hits in their days because, you know, they also have that doom metal influence, they have that epic metal influence. It, it To me, it does feel like a bit of a coincidence. Just a bit, mind you. It's, it's there's, there's wiggle room within there. And I also think that despite all of that, Spirit Adrift still sound mostly like Spirit Adrift. You know, it, again, they hit a lot of similar notes of all these bands, but if you played We Will Not Die, I'm pretty sure I'd be able to tell you that it's Spirit Adrift and not Judas Priest. I'm going to personally give this thing a 4 out of 5. Sure, it's not the most original record ever conceived, but it is incredibly well written and crafted. It's amazingly well performed. The musicianship on here is fantastic. The sound mix is great. The sound mix is where the band really fucking nails this old school metal aesthetic. The reverb, the warm accents of acoustic guitars, the howling vocals, it's, it's all fucking there, man. Sure, it sounds like a bunch of bands combined into one band, but that's kind of how all bands work to an extent, you know? I, I, if I gave Spirit a Drift ship for that, I really should give every metal band ship for that, you know? Lamb of God for is fucking Morbid Angel and Pantera fucking putting a blender and deep fried, but I don't give a shit, because they're great. I will say, mind you, that it might be a good idea to bring in a little bit more of the Doom next time around, and maybe to bring in some outside influences as well, because I think going down this path eventually people are going to dismiss this band as maybe being a, a knockoff kind of 80s metal band. And that's without even mentioning all the retro thrash and heavy metal bands that we've seen in these last few years. I mean, for fuck's sakes, we kind of even addressed that in the Possessed Review. Bands like Power Trip and Gruesome that exist to simply recreate the glory days. At least Spirit Adrift is kind of trying to take it into new directions. Most importantly, again, it's just a great record. It flows really well, it kicks ass, it wreaks havoc. It's an old school heavy metal album with modern spirit and modern fire, and that's all I ultimately truly care about. I've already seen some people saying that this is an album of the year contender. Don't know if I fully agree with that, but it is probably the best old school heavy metal album that I've heard so far this year. So there's that. Once again, four to five, great record. And that is it! For the Metal Meltdown, I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be. So what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? And thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown immediately. And you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.